In the late 80s and early 90s, a group of artists, musicians, MCs, DJs, and producers formed a collective called the Native Tongues. This collective included hip-hop groups like the Jungle Brothers, De La Soul, A Tribe Called Quest, Queen Latifah, Moni Love, Black Sheep, as well as associated groups like Brand Nubian, Chi Ali, The Beat Nuts, The Bush Babies, Fushnikins, and Leaders of the New School. The Native Tongues represent an expansion within hip-hop, a new musical subgenre with a new focus. It's an incredibly influential period of music history, inspiring future Future artists like Pharrell, Outkast, Kanye, Jay Dilla, the Black Eyed Peas, and the Soulquarians Collective of the late 90s. Oh, and also, it's some of the best music ever recorded. Today we're diving into the Native Tongues Collective, the story of their formation, the significance of these classic albums, breaking down samples, seeing their direct influence on music in the years since, and showing how this movement expanded the entire hip-hop genre. The story begins in 1988, and the expansion of hip-hop in multiple directions. On one side, in LA, we have the release of the gangster rap classic Straight Outta Compton. This album gave a rough, unfiltered look at life in Compton, gang culture, and the result of Nixon's war on drugs. NWA openly said the police and called themselves the world's most dangerous group. This album solidified West Coast hip hop as a subgenre, and the overall influence of NWA members like Eazy-E, Ice Cube, and Dr. Dre on hip hop, American culture, and the world is difficult to overstate. Now, here's the other side of that coin. Just a month or two before, we have the release of what would go on to be considered the first album of the Native Tongues Collective, with the release of Straight Out the Jungle by the Jungle Brothers. By contrast, the Native Tongues is much more laid back, lighthearted, and more positive, Afrocentric themes. And to hear Pharrell describe it, he says it set so many of us free. Both of these albums, Straight Outta Compton and Straight Out the Jungle, dealt with the reality of racial disparity in the United States, but approached it in very different ways. These albums splinter off into two different directions, but right here in 1988, let's have some fun. Educated man from the motherland. You see, they call me a star, but that's not what I am. I'm a jungle brother, a true blue brother, and I've been to many places you never discover. Step to my side, suckers running high. Africans in the house, they get petrified. You wanna know why? I'll tell you why. Because they can't stand the sight of the jungle. I so let's talk about the Jungle Brothers. The JBs are made up of Africa Baby Bam, Mike G, and DJ Sammy B, and were in multiple ways the perfect group to continue to push the existing genre of hip hop in a new direction. Mike G cites groups like the Cold Crush Brothers and Soul Sonic Force as major influences. They had the best messages with unity and everything. That's what it was all about to me. They encompassed the true spirit and meaning of hip hop. Africa Baby Bam gets his moniker from Africa Bambata, another hip hop pioneer whose influence can be heard directly on the Jungle Brothers Electro House track. I'll house you. And then there's Mike G's uncle, the legendary DJ Red Alert. Red Alert was a radio disc jockey at 98.7 KISS FM in New York, a crucial part of the hip hop scene, and a mentor to the Jungle Brothers. Red Alert gave the group not only radio airtime, but advice and feedback, knowledge of how to keep a crowd entertained while performing, and a peek behind the hip hop curtain in a way that had a big impact on the Jungle Brothers. As Africa explains, hanging out with Red, you got to meet other quote superstars and saw how it had went to their head already how they were acting all silly and wearing silly clothes. Red would look at them and laugh to himself. If I had met those stars by myself, I probably would have been blown away. But through Red, we were much more grounded. Hanging out with him was definitely a huge influence. Perhaps this is why the Jungle Brothers weren't afraid to come out of the gate in khaki safari outfits wandering around the jungle in their music video. DJ Red Alert was also a member of Africa Bambata's Universal Zulu Nation, an organization promoting unity and cultural awareness through hip hop. The Zulu Nation influence can be seen not only in the Jungle Brothers, but throughout other Native Tongues groups. Red Alert is a crucial part of not only hip hop history, but the Native Tongues especially, as he gave new artists like A Tribe Called Quest, Queen Latifah, and Black Sheep their first radio airplay. But we'll talk about them in just a moment. Before we do, we gotta talk about the next member of the Native Tongues. De La Soul is made up of Paz the Noose, True Goy, who now goes by Dave, and Maceo, three friends who met in high school in the Amityville area of Long Island. The group formed in 1988, and soon a chance encounter with the Jungle Brothers would lead to a collaboration. As Dave recalled, the Native Tongues came about where basically we had a show together in Boston. We had a natural love for the art and a natural love for each other on how we put stuff together. So we invited the Jungle Brothers to a session, and when they hooked up with us, we happened to be doing buddy. It wasn't business, it wasn't for a chick. It was just trading ideas and just seeing what you're doing. Bottom line, it was just having fun. Now, we'll talk about the song Buddy, as well as the crucial third founding group of the Native Tongues, but before we do, let's talk about De La Soul's debut album, Three Feet High and Rising. 
The sound and lyrical themes on this album are similar to the Jungle Brothers. It's very lighthearted, playful, and more laid back and fun. And the group's specific location allowed them to flourish in their own style. Dave recalls viewing hip hop from afar in Amityville, and that if they had all grown up in the Bronx, De La Soul would have turned out very differently. After forming De La Soul together, the group linked up with the most popular DJ and producer in town, Prince Paul who was also a part of the hip-hop band Stetsasonic. This group would pave the way for The Roots, incorporating live instrumentation, sampling, beatboxing, and a variety of musical styles. But when it came to Stetsasonic, Prince Paul felt that a lot of his production ideas were too juvenile for the group. Producing with De La Soul allowed him to have total control of the music, trying out everything they could think of. And while Paz looks back on the recording sessions for Three Feet High very positively, praising Prince Paul for his ability to be open, make mistakes, and not be afraid to start over, Prince Paul has said that from his side, he was figuring out a lot of it as he was going, and describes it as the blind leading the blind. Three Feet High and Rising features extensive use of sampling, pulling from artists such as Johnny Cash, Steely Dan, Hall & Oates, and The Turtles. Take the song The Magic Number. This makes use of nine different samples, including Johnny Cash, The Fatback Band, James Brown, Run DMC, and Schoolhouse Rock. The end result is amazing, and this open use of sampling led to an incredible album. But because of sampling laws, a couple things happened. For one, there were lawsuits like when the Turtles sued. It was over a short sample included in the interlude transmitting live from Mars that De La Soul forgot to mention to the label, so it never got cleared. The Turtles caught it and sued successfully for $100,000. Sorry, side tangent, it's gonna be so quick. So, De La Soul's Three Feet Iron Rising is the result of a great group going into the lab and not worrying about it, just making art. This is a classic album, but because of sampling laws, lawsuits like this, and label issues, it's been unavailable on streaming, so locked away from modern ears, leaving a huge gap in music history. Fortunately, this is about to change. March 3rd, 2023, their full discography will be available on streaming. That's great news. But imagine if the sampling laws were different and allowed for blanket licensing. Imagine what art could get made. Imagine how much better these videos would be if I could openly use De La Soul's music. I actually shot a segment where I took the Schoolhouse Rock sample, sped it up, and turned it into the magic number. But YouTube puts a full block on it so the video can't be seen. This is what I'm talking about, music history gaps. I know this is the game I've chosen to play, but come on. All right, side tangent over. It's through De La Soul that we get into the third core group of the native tongues. One night, Africa Baby Bam of the Jungle Brothers called his friend who was in another hip hop group, telling him that he had to come over and meet this new group called De La Soul. It was two in the morning, but he went over there and met them. The guy's name? Q-Tip from a group that called themselves Quest. Look, I know right now you're like, this white guy is f***ing up. Oh, oh yeah, I love the group that prefers to go by the name of Quest, but that was the name of the group at that point, just Quest. It was Africa Baby Bam who would tell them that they should change their name to the now famous A Tribe Called Quest. Q-Tip recalled the first time he went over to meet De La Soul while they were hanging out with the Jungle Brothers. I went there, met them, and it was just love at first sight. It was disgusting. In hip hop, it praises individualism. I think that's the main achievement of the native tongues. It just showed people could come together. A Tribe Called Quest was made up of Q-Tip, Fife Dog, Ali Shaheed Muhammad, and Jerobi White, who was only with the group for the first album. One thing that the Native Tongues introduced and Tribe especially leaned in heavily on is sampling jazz records, like take the song Daylight by the Roy Ayers Project Ramp. Now speed and pitch that up. Now you've got more jazzy or hip hop. These three groups, the Jungle Brothers, De La Soul, and A Tribe Called Quest, formed a loose collective, influencing each other's sound with uniquely jazzy samples, mellower grooves, positive, playful, Afrocentric lyrics, and even having guest verses on each other's songs. Each group released multiple albums, further carving out this scene, which would grow to encompass other groups and artists. More on that in a minute. These three groups began hanging out more and working on each other's albums with no goal other than to make great music. As Fife recalled, when Tip and the Jungle Brothers met up with Dela, it just seemed like they had known each other for years. We were just kids back then and it was just a family affair, not like a marketing thing. It's like in elementary school, on the weekends you have a sleepover, but the sleepover with Native Tongues was in a recording studio instead. People would just roll by other people's sessions and we'd be in there all night eating Chinese food and working. We had fun being around each other and that was really the main thing. But these first three albums, Straight Out the Jungle in 1988, Three Feet High and Rising in 1989, and People's Instinct of Travels and the Paths of Rhythm in 1990, marked the beginning of the Native Tongues Collective, an expansion within the genre of hip hop, and a new beginning for what was possible with music as an art form. These three groups had a massive impact on not only the hip hop that was made throughout the 90s, but all music throughout the 90s, and remains influential and relevant today. For instance, you can't have this. 
without this. Can't have this without this. Now I won't say that I'm a lady's lover, but if I was, she'd be under my cover. And not only that, you'd be under my wing, and me and you'd be doing the nasty. And you can't have this I got a bone without a this. All of the artists and producers of the more modern songs that I just played, Outkast, Pharrell, Kendrick, have cited the native tongues as an influence on them. But it's not even just the music that was different, and it's not even just the lyrics. While groups like Run DMC had worn gold chains in Adidas and NWA sported gold chains in Raiders jackets, the native tongues went for a more cross-cultural vibe, especially in the beginning, sporting colorful African prints, peace signs, and flowers. While other hip-hop groups like NWA met the dominant American culture, read white capitalist with direct clashing and confrontation, the native tongues took a different approach, rejecting it and instead focusing on themes and images from the African diaspora. I'm not black, so I can't speak to this impact and what this meant to have this kind of representation. So I'll point to a few excellent, powerful stories I've come across. Pharrell says the native tongues set him free. In the book, The Native Tongues Review, Iamos Murad talks all about the Jungle Brothers and how the first line of Straight Out the Jungle, educated man from the motherland, is all he wanted to be. Hanif Abdurraqib wrote an entire book as a love letter to a tribe called Quest and what they meant to him in a generation of African Americans. The name Native Tongues is pulled from the song African Cry by the New Birth from 1972 with lyrics that list out what was taken from Africans as a result of the transatlantic slave trade, including took away our native tongue, taught the English to our young. The Native Tongues expanded hip hop by introducing jazz samples, talking about Afrocentric themes, and showing that hip hop was not a monolith. It's a completely different reaction from what was happening in the world in the late 80s and early 90s and resonated with a lot of people. Also, again, it's just some of the best music ever recorded. And there are so many Native Tongues members we haven't talked about yet. Queen Latifah was another member of the Native Tongues, releasing her debut album All Hail the Queen in 1989, which includes production from Prince Paul and KRS-One. The song Mama Gave Birth to the Soul Children features De La Soul and Ladies First features Moni Love, another Native Tongues member hailing from London who released her own debut album Down to Earth in 1990. For the song Mama Gave Birth to the Soul Children, Queen Latifah teamed up with not only De La Soul, but also producer Prince Paul, who took this sample and turned it into Hello, I'm Queen Latifah, how you doing? I hope that you're with this, I hope that you're willing. I want to introduce you to a black poor mama gave birth to the soul. There are other guest appearances of Native Tongues members on each other's songs as well. The Jungle Brothers' Black is Black features Q-Tip, as does Description off of Three Feet High. Oh, a roller skating jam named Saturdays by De La features Q-Tip and Vinio Mojica, who is featured on several other Native Tongues songs. But the song with the most original Native Tongues members at once is Buddy off of De La's Three Feet High, which features Tribe, the JBs, Latifah, and Moni Love. Oh, or take the group Black Sheep. In their incredibly catchy song, The Choice Is Yours, they carry on a Native Tongues tradition by featuring some upright bass. Now, I'm an upright bass player as well, so I'm a little biased. This is the way to my heart. But 1975 McCoy Tyner is this jazz song. All of a sudden, in the middle, there's a bass cadenza. Listen to that. Ah, it's so good. I love upright bass. Loop that. And we get... I mean, come on. There's still so much to cover. Leaders of the new school, whose most famous member is Busta Rhymes, Brand Nubian, The Beat Nuts, Chi Ali, Foo Schnickens, The Bush Babies. Not only that, the other members already listed also released other albums during this time. And then there's another crucial player who had a huge influence on the sound of many of these records and many records since. Bob Power engineered and mixed many Native Tongues artists, including Tribe, De La Soul, Foo Schnickens, The Bush Babies, and has also worked with groups like Stetsa Sonic, D-Light, D'Angelo, The Roots, Erika Badu, Common, Slum Village, Talib Kweli, and so many more. But by 1993, the native tongues seemed to be, if not disbanding, cooling down a bit. The Jungle Brothers' third album, JB's with the Remedy, had a lot of label trouble and wasn't received particularly well. Q-Tip has said that Tribe's second album, The Low End Theory, broke them out of the native tongue stereotype, and on De La Soul's song, In the Woods, from Balloon Mind State, Pause the News says that native sh is dead. 
But like every good movement, the Native Tongue's influence still couldn't be stopped. De La Soul's fourth album, Stakes Is High from 1996, introduced a guest MC, Mos Def, who would go on to collaborate with Talib Kweli in 1999's Black Star album, as well as solo albums after that. Another track features Common, who, when releasing his second solo album, Resurrection, in 1994, said that he and producer No ID tried to, quote, make some cold-blooded sh** that can get played with a tribe called Quest. And then there was Jay Dilla, who joined Q-Tip and Ali Shaheed Muhammad of Tribe to form the UMA, a production collective who produced for Busta Rhymes, Janet Jackson, later Tribe stuff, and propelled Jay Dilla to a new level. Everyone I just mentioned from this next generation was affiliated with the Soulquarians, the collective formed in the late 90s with Questlove and D'Angelo that carried on with the native tongue started in many ways. But that's already in a whole bunch of other videos. Other people influenced by the native tongues include the Far Side, Dilated Peoples, Diggable Planets, Lauren Hill, Pharrell, Lupe Fiasco, Kanye. Andre 3000 said Outkast wanted to be a street tribe, like a hood tribe. Will I Am said the recipe for every Black Eyed Peas international hit is a roller skating jam called Saturdays by De La Soul. The native tongues expanded hip hop, music, and by extension, all of culture in many ways. There's still so much to talk about in each of these groups, albums, and songs. So keep an eye out for more Native Tongues deep dive videos coming soon. In the meantime, check out the Spotify listening guide in the description. It's got every song I mentioned in this video. The Native Tongues influence is massive and their style and impact was carried on by many different artists, including the Soulquarians Collective. But for that story, you'll have to watch this video.